Okay, so I'm going to show you your user interface. It's pretty popular in the music community. Pro Tools. You've probably heard of that. I mean, you know, I uh, can't imagine using anything else. A lot of people get into programs like Sonar, Cakewalk, you know, just to name a few. Uh, GarageBand on Macs comes free with it, but to be honest, I just like Pro Tools a lot better because a lot of the interfaces that uh, you know, hook up with it, um, as far as Digio 2 racks, um, even M boxes. If if you you know are only doing kind of rap, or you know this is a metal DVD, so anything basic, just kind of solos. You know you only need one or two channels. You can actually buy an M box. It's about that size. It's, it's a couple hundred bucks. Comes with the software, but basically it's an interface to connect your computer with you know your actual tracking. You know I, I still see kids ask me why does their music you know sound so terrible, and what it comes out to is they're trying to track into their basic PC with a quarter eighth you know, uh, basically headphone jack in the back of their computer. And why it sounds so terrible is because those aren't really, uh, you know, those little microphone things are made for headsets, you know, or uh, stuff that's not meant for quality recording. So what Pro Tools does is the interface, you know, uh, M-Boxes, Digio2s, they basically offer you a way to plug in straight up XLR mic cords, uh, instrument cables, and transfer it into your computer with all that, without all that dirty you know, kind of crappy sound that makes your stuff sound real terrible. You probably already knew this, but, uh, you know, that's basically what an interface is. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fond of Pro Tools, but you can also do things like fire, uh, you can get fire ports with, uh, you know, uh, generic controllers on the internet. As far as, I, I've seen eight channel strips where you can track eight things at once if your computer can handle it. Um, via, you know, a $300 interface, but all those, you know, the majority of those don't actually work with Pro Tools because Pro Tools DigiDesign interfaces work with Pro Tools DigiDesign software. So that's one of the downsides to buying a cheap interface. But um, here's basically an overview. This is what, you know, Pro Tools is. You have different channels as far as, um, you know, you obviously you can start channels. This one right here is a stereo channel. The, you know, these are mono channels, stuff like that. Right here, you got your record enable. Basically, you hit record, you know, and, and enable it. Um, solo, you can solo up tracks and mute them. I mean, it's basic. You, you probably mess with a lot of this stuff. So, um, basically up here, you know, you can uh, save it, you know, all those generic, uh, basically generic commands in every program, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, once again, I'm giving you this kind of basic, just boost uh, to give you a heads up. If you haven't, you know, watched our uh, basic Pro Tools training kit. The, more of this stuff is, is on there, more uh, in details. It's just kind of a, you know, basic uh, little update for you guys, you know, just brush up on it. So um, basically, here you go. You know, your, your Pro Tools sessions, basically, when you start, let's start a new project. I'll just call it, you know, hey, bitch. And I spelled bitch wrong. Um, so, you know, I'm going to start this hey, bitch program. It's a, uh, you know, wave 441 uh, sample rate. That's basically what you use for CDs. You know, CDs don't burn, you know, higher sample rates. But if you do want to track, you know, uh, if you want to track, you know, on higher sample rates and stuff, it does sound cleaner to an extent, but a lot of it you have to crush, you know, to throw on CDs. So basically I'm just going to do a basic kind of 16-bit 441, which is, it's generic. I usually pop it to 24 bit, but I'm not going to in this circumstance because I'm not tracking anything. So, you know, 16 bit, you know, hey bitch file, Pro Tools session. Sure, let's get started here. And, uh, yeah, I don't need to save that sample. Okay, so Pro Tools opens up a new thing. Basically, here you got nothing. You don't see, you don't see shit. You know, it's just empty. You know, I've, I've had a lot of people asking me, you know, I have Pro Tools, I don't think it works, I can't track, there's nothing on the screen. Well, there's nothing on the screen because you haven't asked for anything on the screen. So check this out. Basically, you know, you can go to File, you know, uh, or Track, New, Add that stuff, you know, click all the stuff. But to be honest, I strongly encourage you to get the Quick Keys. You know, I actually have Quick Keys tattooed on my arm uh, so I don't forget ever to save my files because I do that every two seconds in case something happens. So anyways, I'm going to hit uh, Control shift n That br basically brings up this thing. You got, you know, options, how many channels you want to make. You know, uh, let's say we're doing an eight-piece drum set, had eight mics set up on that stuff. I would click eight, you know, eight mono channels and, and click that. But today we're not really doing that, so I'm just going to set up one, you know, and show you the difference. Right here you got mono stereo. That, that really doesn't matter. It's usually mono anyway 
for independent channels unless you're tracking some kind of stereo pad, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so you also got the option, you know, a new audio track, auxiliary, master fader, MIDI, instrument track, um, you know, and all that stuff. This doesn't really matter too much uh, for what we're doing, so I'm going to create one audio track. Okay, so right here you got one audio track. Now you have two menus basically in Pro Tools, you know, to check out. You have the mix window right here that you're seeing. This is where you can, you know, uh, select plugins for it, like an EQ, something like that. You know, uh, you also got sends. You can send it out of the interface that you have this time. Um, and then also you can send it through buses, you know, which buses, you know, that's, that's something that's a little more elaborate. So basically, you got one channel set up. We're watching the mix window. So what I'm going to do is hit Control Equal. I believe in, in Mac it's, it's Apple Equals. So you hit that, and then you're going to go to this. And this is the edit window. This is where you can do a lot of damage or good by selecting individual waves, stuff like that you know, moving it around. So, now I'm going to go back to my mix window. So, we're going to get this channel set up to record something, even though we're not recording anything, I'm just kind of showing you. Right here is what your input is. I have an interface, eight channels, that I'm running off of right now. It's actually a Digi-02. I'm going to get the Digi-03 update here in a second. Um, but, uh, yeah, so basically you hit this first thing, and what I would be doing is, dependent upon what I'm plugged into in the back, channel one through eight, you know, you select that. Let's say I got my guitar in channel three, I'm going to set it to channel 3, right? So at this point, we're all set to record. Now all we got to do is hit record, R. And it puts it in, you know, record enable. It's, you're getting a buzz because i got a guitar hooked up, but I'm not playing it. So basically, you know, record. Now you're here in the channel, so you're set to record. So um, you, can, you can start recording in either window. It depends on what you want to do. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll record the shitty little buzz. Here we go. Um, so what I do is hit F12. You can also hit record button. You can do, there, there's like 10 record buttons on this shit that you can hit to start recording. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to start it out, F12, and then it starts recording. And, and uh, you know, once again, if you have eight channels, you're going to have eight things starting to move. You got your time signature up here, like how much time's going off. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the basis of how to start recording. Um, so I'll take it out of record enable, get rid of that annoying shit. Um, so, you know, you got that. Basically, now it's time to mix, edit stuff. Once again, in the mix window, you can you can change volume, basic stuff, panning, you know, uh, you know if you need to. Um, so that's an option. But what you want to do is is you know you're gonna get into the plugins right here as far as entering EQs, make that kick drum, you know, punch out a little bit, a little reverb stuff like that. This is where you would enter if you had vocalists and stuff like a you know auto tune kind of program type stuff. So. You know, that's where you start getting all elaborate, but other than that, that's kind of the basis of how to start recording. You know, uh, when you're done with it, what you would do is, of course, save your file every two seconds. You know, I straight up got that tattooed on my arm, so I don't forget. Never know when power goes out. Um, but let's say you got a, you know, your final. You got eight tracks going around. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, a minute 39 seconds long. It's a grindcore song. Um, so you, you highlight that, and this is basically what you do to get rid of it. So... You know, let's say you're done with all your mixes, you're ready to go, you select that, you know, uh, minute 42 second long grindcore clip, you go to File, Bounce to Disk, and that's where you get these options. And this is the last thing you have to do to get, you know, a final mix out of Pro Tools as far as, you know, all that stuff. So, basically, you're going to bounce source, mine's 1 and 2, that's basically the channels that feed my, my speakers, um, you know, Wave, I always choose unless you're trying to get all complex. MP3s and stuff. Wave is by far more, you know, uh, uh, clean. <laughs> the size is huge compared to MP3s. MP3s is basically a smash version. So if you're trying to go for clarity, if you're, if you're bouncing stuff for CD, album, you're going to want to bounce in Wave, you know, or AIFF, but all this other stuff's really garbage. It's, it's used for other stuff as far as video or internet based kind of advertisement. So um, very important here is what you want to do is you always want to have your format as stereo interleaved. You can do mono or multiple mono, but that's not going to be your finalized thing unless you're trying to, you know, bounce individual files just as mono tracks to mix in another program. You could do you could bounce as mono, but um, you know what you want to do for the final product is stereo interleaved. So I got that selected. You know, uh, resolution 16 bit, and this is once again this is basically a track I would be getting ready. For uh, for you know CD kind of thing, so 16, 44, one, you know that's a basic CD kind of format. 
you know, convert after bounce, and then I would hit bounce, you know, and then, of course, you save it. So I would save, you know, final uh, album song one, you know, something like that. Name it, you would save it, you know, and it would start bouncing. Um, so basically, you know, that's how you start a session, that's how you open stuff, and that's how you bounce a, f a final. So that, that'll give you enough info if you don't already know about Pro Tools, kind of give you a little basic overview of what you need to do you know, to set up a session and get rolling with this program.